The 15 day version of the Dexcom G7 is out now. I'm a diabetes doctor and I'm gonna answer your questions about the 15 day product from easiest to hardest. So let's get started. To start, the 15 day product is a different sensor than the 10 day version, but it looks visually identical and it has a very similar looking box. Like the G7 10 day, it does have a 12 hour grace period. So it's technically a 15 and a half day sensor. The G7 15 day version first became available on December 1st, 2025, but it was a initially only available through hardware channels, such as Advanced Diabetes Supply, Byram, or Edge Park. It just now became available through pharmacies in the first part of January 2026. At the launch of the G7 15-day version, it is compatible with the Omnipod 5 and the Beta Bionics Islet insulin pumps. Tandem has already committed to making the G7 15-day compatible with the X2 and Mobi insulin pumps, and it should be available in the next month or two. Omnipod 5 users do not need a brand new version of the Omnipod 5 pods, but keep in mind they still will need to get the new 15-day version of the Dexcom G7. The monthly cost of the G7 15 day is gonna be the exact same price as the 10 day version of the G7, but keep in mind, since you're gonna be getting only two sensors per month rather than three, the per unit cost is actually a little bit higher for the G7 15 day. Both the G7 15 day and the 10 day version will still use the same exact Dexcom G7 app that you know and love. This means that all the new app based features such as the smart AI food logging will be available for people using the Dexcom G7 10 day or 15 day sensors. Similarly, the G7 15 day and 10 day versions will still use the same exact Dexcom G7 receiver. Because the Dexcom G7 15 day is a completely different product than the 10 10 day sensor, it does require a new prescription from your physician or prescriber. While the 10 day and 15 day versions of the G7 look almost identical, they do have some significant differences. First, of course, one is a 15 day sensor, the second is a 10 day sensor. Second, the 15 day sensor utilizes an updated algorithm which improves the accuracy of the Dexcom G7 15 day sensor. Now, as a trade off, it does have a slightly longer warm up period of one hour versus the 30 minutes found in the 10 day G7. Lastly, the G7 15 day is FDA approved for people 18 years and up, whereas the Dexcom G7 10 day sensor is approved for those that are two years old and older. Since the 15 day sensor is not approved for pediatric patients or kids, the G7 10 day sensor and the G7 15 day sensor will stay on the market side by side. So the G7 10 day is not going anywhere. As far as we know, there has been no official statement saying that the 15 day has a better adhesive or new antenna. However, I can say that over time, Dexcom has been improving the adhesive and signal strength of the Dexcom G7 ecosystem. As many people have pointed out, there is an asterisk in their marketing material stating that only 74% of sensors lasted the full 15 days. So we know that not every person is gonna be able to make each of these sensors last the full 15 days. That being said, Dexcom has also been pretty transparent about replacing sensors and really trying to make sure that patients have the best experience. So if your sensors are not lasting the full time that they're supposed to, Dexcom should replace them. And I think this is something that Dexcom has been improving in terms of their customer service experience over time. So I kind of alluded to this earlier, but the 10 day version of the G7 does get some of the benefits of the 15 day in the sense that it uses the same app. So it will get a lot of the same software benefit advantages like the recently introduced smart AI food logging. In addition, Dexcom has been making some tweaks to things like the adhesive and the signal strength over the years to improve the Dexcom G7. And those iterative upgrades are also found in the 15 day sensor. However, unfortunately, the updated algorithm found in the 15 day sensor is not going to be in the 10 day sensor moving forward. My understanding is that it would probably require an FDA submission to change the algorithm or update the algorithm for the G7 10 day sensor. I'm not a pediatric endo, so I'm not as familiar with how off label things work in the pediatric population. But my suspicion is that if your child has no problems wearing the full 10 days of the 10 day sensor and wants to try out the 15 day, I think the insurance company won't have too much of a problem as long as your prescriber is willing to write it off label and you know they may need to do a prior authorization request. One thing to keep in mind is that there's nothing binding you to one specific version of the Dexcom. You can hop around, you can try the G7 10 day, try the 15 day. Um, and if you don't like it, you can go back to whatever sensor you're using before. So there's nothing really committing you to one specific sensor 
other than, of course, the hassle and bureaucracy of, uh, you know, getting a prescription from your prescriber and, you know, getting your insurance to cover it and things like that. Ah, so this is a tough question because recently uh, G Dexcom did announce that the G6 is going to be ending production by the end of June 2026. For people who previously had a bad experience with the Dexcom G7 10 day and or have just been staying on the Dexcom G6 because they're scared about what they've heard about the G7, I actually think the 15 day sensor is going to be different. In limited testing, I've worn one so far um, and just talking to people that have been trying it out, um, talking to some people behind the scenes at Dexcom, there is some reason to believe and be optimistic that that updated algorithm and whatever iterations that they've been working on behind the scenes on all the G7 products, that the G7 system has matured and especially the 15 day version of it should be a lot more reliable than the initial versions of the G7 10 day. So note there that I actually think the G7 10 day sensor has improved a lot over the past several months. Dexcom officially has gone so far to say as much in an October 2025 earnings call, they said that there were some hardware manufacturing issues that were fixed and resolved as of October 2025. Now, I think that was primarily for some of the goosenecking issues and the, the startup, the sensor that were failing to start up properly. But over the years, they have improved the adhesive. They have improved the signal strength or connectivity of the G7. And the G7 15 day has that updated algorithm, which I don't think is just smoke and mirrors. Initially, I thought it was, but in limited testing, talking with several people I trust, patients that have tested out early versions of the G7 15 day and people that work at Dexcom, I do think it is a better quality sensor and the algorithm is improved over the G7 10 day. But like I said, I do think the 10 day sensor has improved as well. Now the challenge though, is that I've learned that the supply chain takes a long time to go through, right? So if you go to a CVS right now, even in January of 2026, you might get a G7 10 day that was manufactured back in April or May of 2025 that still might have some of the older technology or the older manufacturing issues. However, with the G7 15 day, you know it's gonna be Whatever you get from the pharmacy is going to be the new batch, the reliable batch, and I do think Dexcom was very deliberate about waiting to release the 15-day and make sure they had worked through a lot of their kinks. Keep in mind, it did get approved actually in the first quarter of 2025, but they didn't release it until December of 2025. But I think part of that delay was to make sure that the launch went much more smoothly than the initial launch of the 10-day sensor. So all that being said, if you've had a bad experience with the G7 10 day or you're hesitant to switch from the G6 to the G7, I say, wait, give it a few months. See what people say. See what the online discourse is like. See what your endocrinologist says as they're talking to multiple patients who are using these different sensors. And then come say March, April, May, you might want to try it out. Try out switching to the G7 15 day and see if it works for you. If you find that the G7 15 day proves itself to you, that's the best case scenario. And if it doesn't, the great thing is there's great competition on the market. The Freestyle Libre 3 Plus is becoming compatible with more and more automated insulin delivery systems. It currently integrates with the Beta Bionics Eyelet, the Tandem X2 insulin pump, and it should very soon be compatible with the Omnipod 5 and Tandem Mobi as well. And it's compatible with the Medtronic 780G, but under the different name, the Medtronic Instinct. And there's even a third option in the Eversense 365, which is that implanted continuous glucose monitor that goes under the skin. It lasts for one year. And um, very soon now, in January of 2026, it should integrate with the SQL Twist insulin pump. And my hope is that it will integrate with more and more partners over the course of the year. Keep in mind that each of these sensors have different benefits and disadvantages. So it's important to find the one that is the best fit for you. And a lot of that includes doing research on the different features of each sensor. Also, you can talk to your prescriber about potentially getting samples or getting a short month supply to try out different features and different sensors and to find the one that is the best fit for you. Hopefully that answers all of your questions, but if you have one that I didn't get to, put it in the comments below and maybe I'll make another video.